I've been using Things 3 for years now and I've been teaching people how to use it for years, but I still discover new features from time to time. So in this video, I'll share with you 10 hidden Things 3 features. The very first feature has to do with quick entry. Quick entry is the thing that pops up if you use the keyboard shortcut control space. It lets you create a to do from anywhere on your Mac. So for example, I can say water the plants. Now you'll see that it defaults to the inbox and you can click this or you can use the keyboard shortcut command shift M for move to move it to a different area or project or to a area or a project. However, what we can do is we can go to notes. No, not notes. We can go to things. There we go. <laughs> and then settings and under quick entry, there's a feature that lets you say quick entry should save to today by default. So that might be really helpful if you mostly find yourself using quick entry to write down to do's that you want to work on today. I will caution you not to add too many to do's to your today list because that might be really depressing if you don't get to most of them by the end of the day. But it's good to know that the option is there. OK, hidden feature number two is that you can import to do's from other apps into things to do that on the Mac. Just go file import. And then you can choose, for example, to import from the Reminders app, from Todoist, or if you click this link, it'll open a page on the Cultured Code Help website and show you that you can also import to-dos from OmniFocus or from older versions of Outlook for Mac or Toodle, Toodle Do. I don't know what that is. Never heard of it. <laughs> or from a plain text file. But for most of you, it will be relevant if you're currently using Apple Reminders, OmniFocus, or Todoist, and you want to move to things. There is a way to get your tasks into things. Now, it may not be perfect. Repeating to-dos may not show up as repeating, but it could save you a lot of time if you do want to switch switch. Okay. Feature number three that's hidden is that you can open multiple things windows. So let me just minimize this notes window right here. You see this little button up here. If I click that, it actually opens a new things three window. And so this is very handy because what I can do, for example, is I can go to my weekly review project. Let's say I'm doing my weekly review here. I'm looking at the master copy of that's the, the master repeating copy and not an instance of it. But let's say this was an instance. I can just go like this and have that sitting right next to my things. As I work through all my projects and areas, I can check things off or I could even while I'm working on my email inbox, have my email app on the left over here. So really handy way to have multiple things windows. And if you have a smallish things window on the Mac, what you can see is at the top here, you can actually click this and you can make this show something else. So I can make this show, for example, someday or logbook, trash, et cetera, et cetera. You can also have two things screens side by side on iPad and to do that with things open, just swipe up from the bottom of your iPad long press the things icon and then drag another things window on top of itself. You can then use the ellipses at the top of a window to close it or to change what the window looks like. And if you've got a recent iPad and you've updated it to the latest version of iPad OS, you can also open Control Center and then use Stage Manager. And if you do that, then you can do the same trick where you grab a things and put it on screen. Then you can use the little handlebar at the bottom left of a screen to actually make it smaller or bigger. So I can move this. There we go. Now I have two things screens next to each other. And again, I can make one screen, for example, my weekly review and do my weekly review and have things right next to it on iPad as well as on the Mac. Hidden feature number four that you can cancel to do's and cancel to do. So how does that work? Normally, if I've got this task over here and I click it, you see there's a little check mark and now it goes to the logbook. And it says I completed this task so I can undo that. But if I actually hold the option key on my keyboard and then I click it, it becomes a little cross. And you see that it's struck out. Now this means I've canceled this to do. So this is basically a way of saying I didn't do this. <laughs> and of course, if I undo this, of course, I can I can click this task and delete it right by hitting the delete button. Let me just undo that again. Um, but then the task will not show up in the logbook. It will be moved to the trash. So if there's something that you're planning to, but you didn't get around to doing it, you may want to hold the option key and then click it to have that little X just to show that you didn't get around to it. And you'll have that nicely logged in your logbook. Hidden feature number five is that you can pause repeating to do's. So for example, here I have my weekly review project. It repeats every week. And by the way, you can do this with to do's as well as projects as long as they're repeating. What I can do is I can right click it and go repeat 
and go pause. Now, why might you want to do that? Let's say I'm going to do a meditation retreat for like a month, right? While I'm in there, I'm not going to look at any electronic devices. So I'm not going to be doing my weekly review. I don't want to get out of the meditation retreat and then see four incomplete weekly reviews sitting in the today view of my things because that would just be messy, right? So what I can do is I can actually go repeat and say pause. Now, if you do this, here's what I could recommend doing. Just open quick entry and create a task that says restart the repeating project for weekly reviews or in your case it might be restart the repeating to do for such and such right now set that for the date that you want to restart it so maybe it's like january 23rd or something right and i'll put this under my admin area so now not only will the repeating to do or project be paused for the duration that is not relevant but you also have a reminder for yourself um, that will show up in the today view on the date that you set. So in this case, on January 23rd to restart that project or to do so you don't forget about it. I'll click save. And while I'm at it, I'll go back to things and the settings and just make sure the quick entry saves to the inbox by default because that's my preference anyway. And I am not going to be pausing my weekly reviews. Weekly reviews are very important. All right. Hidden feature number six is that you can actually get a link to a things to do or a things project to use somewhere else. For example, here I've got this project for this video that I'm recording right now. What I can do is I can click the ellipsis over here and then click share and I can click copy link. Now, after I do that, I can go and use that. For example, here in the notes app, if I hit command K, I create a link and I can paste it. And it looks like this, it's like things, colon, slash, 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 blah, blah and click OK. And now this is a link to this project and things. So let's let me navigate back to today. Now, if I click this just to demonstrate, boom, I'm back in the project and things. So that's pretty handy, right? Now, there's another way that you can do this. You can also on the Mac, click this button right here. And if, if you're doing this in the Apple Notes app, by the way, um, and it's called add a link. If I click that, then I'll see that because I have things open on the same desktop, this only this probably doesn't work if you're on full screen, but if you have things open on the same desktop as a notes um, note right here, then you can click add link and it creates this link right here. And again, let me just go back to today, double click this and it opens the relevant project in things, okay? But if you don't use Apple Notes, then what you just wanna do is go to the ellipsis here, share and get the link that way and you can paste it wherever else you want and it'll create a link that goes back two things. Hidden feature number seven is about things widgets on your iPhone or your iPad. You might already know that you can create widgets, but did you know just how much you can customize the widgets? Here I am on my iPhone and I'm going to tap and hold the screen until things start jiggling. Then I'll tap the plus symbol and then I'll search for things. I'll tap things and now I'll choose to add a things widget. Let's say the medium sized one. I'll tap done and now I will tap and hold the widget and then I can tap edit widget. I can choose what list I want to display. For example, let's say I want to display a list of my upcoming deadlines. And then I can just tap out of this and now I have a list of my upcoming deadlines. Isn't that pretty cool? Deadlines is one of those views, by the way, that's also a hidden view inside things. And you can access this in the main things app on iPhone, iPad, and the Mac as well. In fact, it's one of the 10 tips that I did in a previous video about things you might not know about things three. So make sure to watch that video as well. I'll put it on screen at the end of this video and I'll link to it in the description below. Anyway, let me do another example of how you can customize a widget. I'm again gonna add a widget in the same way. Search for things, swipe to the right, tap add widget, tap done. And I'm gonna again tap and hold and edit the widget. And now I'm gonna say, let's say, I want to see all of my content marketing to do's and projects, but I want to filter them by a certain tag. And I want to filter them by the YouTube tag so that I see all of my YouTube to do's and projects. Now, if I go out of this, this top widget has all of my YouTube to do's and, and projects right here. That's pretty neat, right? But we can go further because I can actually go back to edit widget and then I can customize what the plus button does. So I can say the plus button on this widget should create a new to do in the current list. So now you see the plus button over there on the top widget I have right here. If I tap that, now I'm in the content marketing list and I'm creating a new to-do that already has the YouTube tag assigned. So I could say, for example, research other person's channel or something like that. Really, really handy. Okay, one final tip about widgets for things that is really handy. 
is if you lock your iPhone and then you go on the lock screen, you can actually customize the lock screen right here. You'll see I already have it. See the big plus button? I'll show you how to do this. Just tap customize, tap lock screen. I will delete this one and show you how to add it. Just scroll down, find things, and then scroll until you see this plus button. If you drag that, or actually if you tap it, you can tap or drag it, and then tap out of all this until you get back to your normal lock screen the way that it is. Now if you press this button, it lets you really quickly add a new task to things. So this lets you actually add a task super fast without even unlocking your phone, or if you have an iPhone 14 Pro with the always on display, you'll be able to see that button even without touching your display. So that's some of the things you can do with widgets in things. Hidden feature number eight is that you can set the logbook to work manually. What do I mean by that? If I have a task here and I click the checkbox, it gets completed and it goes away and now it lives in the logbook like I showed you before. I can click it here and it will go out of the logbook again. But I can go to things and then settings and then under general, I can say move completed items to logbook, not immediately, but maybe only once a day or I can do it manually. So perhaps you've been super focused recently on your enormously long to-do list and you've lost track of how much you are actually completing. So if you're feeling really bad because you feel like you never accomplish anything and you just could use a little help and feel a little bit more proud of your achievements, of your accomplishments, maybe this is for you. Because what you can do now is you can check this off, check this off, check this off, and as you're working through your to-do list for today, the tasks will stay under today. And there'll be a constant reminder that you've actually already done things today. So that can be really nice. And the way to then move them to the logbook is just to use the keyboard shortcut command and shift Y. They'll go to the logbook. So that can be pretty cool. I'm going to turn this off because I do like it to work automatically, but I wanted to make sure you knew about this because it's not immediately obvious. It's kind of a hidden feature. Okay, what have we got next? You can figure out in things when you've completed a to-do. So this can be pretty handy. Let's say you need to track your time because you're a freelancer or your boss wants you to track your time and you want to know, hey, when did I start working on something? Uh, like when did I create a task and when did I stop working on something? Well, of course, things is not a complete time tracker, but it does have some information. If I go to the logbook, for example, I have this task here that's fill in the video structure template that I have for this particular video I'm recording right now. I can right click it and then I can click get info over here and it'll show me when I created this particular task and when I completed this particular task. Pretty handy, right? Okay, let's do the last hidden feature in Things 3 and that is that you can just start typing. So with Things Open, I can just start typing W-I-F-I, -I, boom. There we have investigate Wi-Fi issues, which is a task that I have here. Or I can search for calendar, and then I find the task turn calendars back on. And you can also search for projects, for headings within projects, etc., etc. It's a really cool feature, and it also works on your iPad in things if you attach a keyboard to your iPad. You can also just start typing. Now, if you found these hidden features cool, if you didn't know about them yet, if you found these tips helpful, you can learn much, much more about things by enrolling in my course called Organize Your Life with Things 3. It's not just about showing you around the app, it's also about learning an entire workflow about how to integrate things into your daily life to be more organized and more productive. The link to the course is in the description of this video. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Ciao.